I got that copy of Welcome to the Hashtag Hype Train Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Matt. And I'm Corey. And I know what you're thinking to yourself. Corey? Yes, that's right. I'm that Corey. The same Corey who's the inspiration for the main character for the Just Cause series. And yes, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> is the, wait, the main character of the Just Cause series is not named Corey. Are you sure? Was he named Corey? Really? God, know. I gotta look that up one day. What? Probably so, won't, though. <laughs> no, you won't. You're a fool. All right. Here on the Hype Train, we like to uh, review the latest and greatest in trailers for everything going on in TV, movies, and video games. Now, we're uh, reprising our, uh, one of our series here. We're doing another Platform Wars episode. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. There are, so many, there are so many streaming platforms out uh, these days. The hashtag Hype Train Podcast can't possibly stop at all platforms. So they are vying for our attention. Uh, so we're going to go through uh, three offerings from three different streaming services. Uh, this time, Disney Plus, CBS Access, and Hulu uh, to see... Uh, which one we're going to stop the hype train at and which one we're going to just plow through uh, and probably destroy with the hype train. Hope everyone gets out of the way. Uh, but if they don't, that's it's really dark, uh, actually. <laughs> so yeah, I have, the fir- I have the first trailer. This is uh, the offering from uh, Disney Plus. What with, uh, you know, the memes about Baby Yoda eating uh, chicken nuggets and everything. You know, everybody knows this. It's the part of uh, the Disney Star Wars universe that everyone seems to love. It, uh, everyone's hyped for this, or are they? We'll find out. This is The Mandalorian Season 2. Show me the one whose safety deemed such destruction. You must reunite it with its own kind. Where? This you must determine. The songs of eons past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. You expect me to search the galaxy and deliver this creature to a race of enemy sorcerers? This is the way. You know this is no place for a child. He goes. So I've heard. All right, everybody. That was the trailer for The Mandalorian Season 2. Um, Disney Plus's offering, trying to get us to uh, uh, park the hype train at their platform. Uh, I'll start. Um, I wasn't on board uh, with The Mandalorian initially um, as a ultra mega nerd uh, who really loved Star Wars, at least as a child I did. I was, I was excited when The Mandalorian was announced because 
uh, people may remember that around 2007, 2008, uh, there was talk of a mature uh, Star Wars TV show in production, live action TV show in production, uh, focusing around bounty hunters. And I was like, oh, that'll, that'll be good, right? But it never materialized for a number of reasons. And then when the, the Mandalorian was announced, I'm like, oh, maybe this will be sort of that. And then um, the child uh, was revealed and everyone's like, oh my gosh, baby Yoda is so cute. And I'm like, oh, this isn't what I was hoping this would be. And it made me upset for a little bit. Um, but, you know, I'm over it. Uh, this trailer looks pretty cool to me. Wh one of the great things about getting into the expanded universe of Star Wars is they don't have to be constrained with the direction they took the most recent movies uh, since that has been very polarizing. I didn't particularly like the last two. Uh, this is definitely more Rogue One vibes than uh, The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker vibes. And uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a lot of fan service too. Uh, at the beginning, love those scout troopers on uh, the speeders. That's just peak Star Wars uh, to me. Even uh, even see like the actual X-wings, not the weird new X-wings that have the wrong number of engines. Disney always has to be like, okay, but we need new designs for stuff too, because uh, it's Star Wars. I don't know what the deal with like Tie Fighters with folding wings is now. Um, that's in the trailer, but yeah, you know. Looks looks hype to me. Gonna popcorn over to Corey because I didn't popcorn over to him last episode. So I'm gonna popcorn to him now. Hey. Corey, take hey, it that's away. me. Uh, so I am. I guess I guess my hype for Mandalorian season two has been like increasing. I guess uh, when season one ended or when I finished season one, I was like, oh, this was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed this a good amount. Like, if they just stopped right here, I would be satisfied with uh, with The Mandalorian as is, as like a one season and series. Like, it would have been fine to just end it and leave it on a cliffhanger and maybe pick it up in a movie or something down the road. But Disney took the opposite uh, effect and just started letting rumors spread throughout the internet about like, did you know that, oh, Boba Fett might be in season two? And oh, did you know we might see... Anakin for a second and did you know that this person is going to be this and this and it just became so much and to even to Sanford's effect who hasn't seen it yet like all the memes and just like I know off the top of my head I can name six people uh from my Facebook friends group who share child memes all day every day and have yet to watch an ounce of that show and nothing in fear like it's like the it's like the people getting mad at people wearing band shirts for never having heard of that band. Like, I don't know if you're aware of this, Gutter, but there actually was music recorded before 1989. What is this? You're going to wear this to the show. You're going to wear the shirt of the band you're going to go see. Don't be that guy. Like, it's just, it infuriates me for no reason, because it shouldn't. Like, people can share and like and do whatever they want. But, like, it's just like, no, this is supposed to be something better than you and your chicken nugget memes or you saying you need coffee in the morning because it's your wake-wake drink or whatever. Everyone has to attach to the child now. So, like, I was at, like, a super low point until they released this trailer and I was able to, like, take this in as kind of a palate cleanser of, like, yeah, the world is stupid and everyone is stupid, but we're still trying to kind of focus on making this a good show and making this more of a Star Wars experience that you, me personally, would enjoy as opposed to what most of Star Wars has been recently. Like comparing this, like Sanford just compared this to Rogue One and I feel like that's such a good comparison because Rogue One was able to act like act in the Star Wars universe around things we knew and love while still keeping a core of like, these are unique characters with their own stories and their own lives and thoughts and feelings but you can still see where the broad strokes are going. So uh, I'm hyped for Mandalorian season two, but at the same time with how much this exploded and how popular it became, there's inevitably always gonna be that question of whether or not you can recreate uh, lightning in a bottle.
and I'll uh, I'll kick it to Mikey now. Cool. Um, yeah, I like a lot of your points there, Corey, especially with how popular it's got. How I got into The Mandalorian wasn't even like the hype for it or anything like that. What really it was was I got Disney Plus for the Marvel shows just because I'm a bigger Marvel fan than I am Star Wars. And I, at, in my like waiting for those to get released, um, The Mandalorian was out. I just maybe heard little th- stuff about it just because the internet is – as much as I try to stay off of all the clickbaity stuff, the internet is so huge that something like that uh, even I get to hear about it. And uh, so I, I watched – I decided to turn it on as like the really the, – it was like the first – real original thing that Disney plus had. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised in, um, how well it was made when watching the first season. I was like, wow, the production value and everything. It's, it feels like you're watching the big budgets, uh, movies. Cause one of my concerns was that it was going to be more TV show than, than star Wars movie esque in, in its production values. Um, I loved the bounty hunter character, the Mandalorian character himself in, in even more than because I didn't really care that much about um, Baby Yoda. I mean, that did come out, but that wasn't the reason I liked the show at all. It was really how badass the Mandalorian was in like the first scene that you see him in the opening of the first episode when he's going into that little cantina and he's collecting a bounty and he's just kicking so much ass. And I was like, this is awesome. This is what I want to see a Mandalorian doing in the Star Wars universe, I don't care which Mandalorian, even though, you know, everyone, Boba Fett, blah, blah, blah. But it was just, that was so cool in itself. Um, I know John Favreau um, wrote a lot of this, I believe. I don't know if he did it alone. I'm looking at the Wikipedia page now, but um, I think he does a really great job with a lot of different uh, properties like this. To what you're saying about the speculations for season two, Corey, in, on the Wikipedia page, it has uh, Boba Fett listed as a character played by, uh, to, to, I can't pronounce this, but Tumara Morrison, who um, he was the actor for in he, the prequels, I believe. Matt, yeah, you, he plays Django Fett. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Tamora Morrison plays Django Fett and I think most of the clones in the Star Wars prequel series. And so decided that he is now Boba Fett too, obviously. It just makes sense. Boba Fett oh, is a it, clone. Clone, yes. So it's just you cool know, that, so. uh, you know, Boba Fett is going to be in this. It's a plus, I think, um, for all of the uh, uh, Star Wars fans out there. I feel like that's definitely something uh, interesting to see because I, I remember during the first season, I couldn't place in the timeline of events of the Star Wars universe where the show was at the beginning. I still don't really know, but part of me doesn't care because the show's just good. And I like seeing this character and the things that he's going through. Um, Matt, when you harken back to um, related or said it was more like rogue one esque, I definitely agree with that. I really enjoyed rogue one Um, in the, especially in the, the, the Android, the, the droids in the Mandalorian (laughs) universe and the droids in rogue one, definitely definite similarities there. Um, Mm. But yeah, I, I, I love that. And the, the like uh, assassin droid in, in, uh, in season one and everything like that. One of my favorite characters, I think, in, in all of it. Um, other people that are going to be featured in this, you got Rosario Dawson is going to be, I guess, a former Jedi uh, Padawan of Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, um, she's uh, Snips. Yeah. And then uh, Tim... Ahsoka, Tim- Ahsoka. Oh. Yeah, is, is the character's actual name, I realized. Ahsoka is her name. Yeah, it's Ahsoka Tano is on the uh, Wikipedia yes. page here. Uh, Timothy Oliphant is going to be um, in this as well, which I like seeing him and stuff. Pretty decent actor Love there. Um, he's going to be a former slave who acquired Boba Fett's Mandalorian armor. Very interesting there. So there's like little hints to maybe what, what the story is <laughs> going to be. Um, oh, Michael Bain is just listed as Bounty Hunter, if I'm pronouncing that right. But he was the in the first Terminator movie. He's a uh, Kyle Reese in that Kyle movie. Yeah. So pretty cool. I mean, like, wow, like, you know, playing another bounty hunter kind of thing. Uh, all Star Wars inaccuracies aside and all that stuff and all the crazy hype and, you know, whether or not the memes are annoying, I don't care. This show is just good. I think it's well-written, well-produced. The visuals are amazing. Um, you know, it, it's funny because I did read that. Um, they, I think there was a video of it too showing how they did it, the backgrounds for it. 
Um, they use Unreal Engine 4, a video game uh, engine, to do the backgrounds. So the production value is there. The acting chops are there. Uh, the story written by John Favreau is is well written. I mean, what more can you ask for? So and here's the uh, theme yeah. song. Boomer bus time. I'm here. We go. Oh man, we got to record <laughs> an awesome version of that. Um, okay, yeah. lay down, lay down the tracks. <laughs> lay down some tracks. All right. Uh, All right, I'll start. Uh, yeah. Boomer bus for me is going to be boom. This is going to be a fun time. Everyone's going to enjoy it. The internet will go crazy again for the child. Sanford. Uh, yeah, definite definite boom for me. As well. Mikey. Oh yeah, biggity biggity boom. Um very excited. Like I said, I don't care whatever anyone else in the world has to say, the show's good. That's it. Period. All right, let's move on to uh here we go. <laughs> the next trailer here for CBS All Access, I believe. This one's yours, Corey. Go ahead. Guys, it was 1990. Sega, a startup gaming company, assembled a team to take on Nintendo, the world's greatest video game company. A make-or-break conflict pit brother against brother, Sonic against Mario, American capitalism against Japanese tradition in Console Wars. Hold on. Wait. Fuck. Play the thing. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Play the thing. Do... I can't see it. Share I know, because I need... Hold on. I got to do this. Oh. I got to hit share screen. Yeah. Leave this all in. Here. This is golden. It's the hot new buzz. Video games. Nintendo games! Nintendo! <laughs> With 95% or more of the market, we were the video game industry. But then it changed. Sega! Sega! It was hard to build a major video game system. None of us really knew if Sega was going to be a success. The challenges we had were the very strong presence of Nintendo. We needed something to compete with Mario. Sonic the Hedgehog. A hedge what? Yeah, I've been staying up late playing video games. We established a rule that Nintendo was not going to get pushed around. We're at war, guys. We've got to win this. It became a kind of spy versus spy. They had these large inflatable balloons like Sonic. He had them deflated. A lot of yelling and screaming at various events. They were furious with us. I did not expect the U.S. Congress to get involved. We sent a message to Sega that we were going to continue to fight. There was a lot at stake. It was unbelievable. You got to be ready to fight. was the trailer for console wars on cbs all access now i don't have much to say about this so it won't be very long till i kick it to somebody else but what i do have to say is this that trailer is cool it was fun it had things that made me feel nostalgic it had upbeat music it had graphics and sound effects it was uh, it was just a fun time and since i'm already the dark runner for rooting for cbs all access anyway i thought i'd pick something that kind of at least gave it a fighting chance down the road uh, with that said, I'm going to kick it to Sanford, who is actually the expert on console wars. Sanford? Yeah. So this is an interesting thing, because this, in a way, this, this show is an adaptation. Uh, it's based on a book of the same name, Console Wars. The weird thing about it is that this show looks like sort of like a more traditional documentary style with a whole bunch of interviews and talking heads and that sort of thing. The book isn't that way. Um, it focuses, it's, it's written in a faux narrative, like as events happen. While it is presented as like a historical book, there's actual like dialogue between characters and everything. So it's written in a very strange way. The author of the book didn't purport like, okay, this is what the conversation said. He interviewed people and wrote basically like, okay, this is the gist of what happened. Okay, I will write a scene to, to explain what happened, just not necessarily in the way it actually happened in real life, if that makes any sense. It almost doesn't in the book either. It just kind of works. The other thing about it is the book has a main character. It focuses on uh, Tom Kalinske, the president of Sega of America. At the end of uh, 1990, beginning of uh, 1991 through 1996, uh, and that's weird that the book is about Tom Kalinske. The trailer isn't about Tom Kalinske. 
he he seems he's there. It seems like he's just uh, just like everybody else. Uh, but obviously, the basic premise is the same. It's not about the launch of the Sega Genesis, but it's about the Sega Genesis really coming to its into its own and competing with the NES and then later the Super NES in the American market with the launch of Sonic the Hedgehog and just sort of what was going on in the industry at that really interesting time. Uh, and it's a pretty good book. I didn't even initially realize <laughs> when Corey said, we're going to discuss console wars in the next episode, that this was based on the book because this adaptation has done sort of a genre flip from narrative to documentary. <laughs> it confused me at first, but then I was like, oh wait, this is the book. This is the book I read. And as it says in the trailer, produced by um, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, uh, they actually write the foreword to the book uh, where they talk very little about the contents of the book, just being like, oh yeah, man, remember like getting high for the first time and playing Goldeneye? And they're like, yeah, absolutely, man. How do you write a <laughs> foreword to a book? Are you serious? Uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a good book and, um, and Council Wars should be interesting um, as long as they don't find a way to make a very interesting topic boring. Obviously, all documentaries are going to be complicated as far as a hype concept is concerned, uh, just because if you're not interested in the subject matter, you're not going to like the documentary. Um, but so yeah, that's what I have to think about console wars. Get some popcorning over to you, Mike. It's interesting that one, this is the first documentary um, put on the hype train, which as you were talking about, Matt, I just, I, you don't see a lot of hype for documentaries, which is why I like there's documentaries I get interested in, but I, you know, I wouldn't put them on the show because I just wouldn't see a point, but this is kind of different because this is platform wars. And one thing I learned is that this is the uh, the first like original CBS all access um, movie or documentary that they're putting on the their streaming service. Other than like because CBS has obviously a bunch of shows and stuff that they that they're going to put on there, but this is their first original um, work, and it's leading with the documentary about video games as CBS All Access' is streaming service is like their thing to lead off with is weird to me that that would be the pick. Um, but just because, you know, every, every streaming service, I mean, to compete, I guess, with, say, the likes of Netflix and Hulu that are, like, established, they all have original works that are, um, they're, not, they're, they're not documentaries. They're, they're fiction, and they're, like, usually... Uh, I guess a more interesting story, not to say that this isn't interesting. Um, it reminds me because on Netflix, I, I was watching, there is a documentary style series called uh, High Score. And it's all about the history of video games. And it touches upon this as well, part of the console wars. But, you know, there's, it has like, I think six or seven episodes. Um, and it's done documentary style. This seems to focus just on sega versus nintendo and that's interesting to yeah. me um the, the they touch upon that in the high score documentary a bit at least in the uh marketing campaign that sega had to take down nintendo and it's pretty interesting there and how they want to they're like they make fun of nintendo as like the kid the little kid version and sega's for hardcore gamers you know and uh they even touch upon how like kids were uh, divided in the day of either being a Nintendo kid or a Sega kid. And we talk about that now on the hype, on the hype train. Um, yeah. I want to point out, this is definitely not the first CBS All Access original thing. Thank you. All of, all, all of the recent Star Trek stuff is CBS All Access produced. Okay. Uh, uh, CBS All Access doesn't even count this as their original. Like, they count it as a docu-series series that they're helping along like i know it says original in the it says on the wikipedia the it became the first original film for cbs all access so maybe film okay is that the keyword well, yeah because I, I guess know. i guess yeah because because none of the star trek stuff they've been doing have been films 
Um, my ranting never does justice to the actual information that I get. So you have to bear <laughs> with me on that. Um, so I don't know. This, to me, just the, I guess the first original film from CBS All Access, um, that's a weird choice. for If you're going to make a film, let's make it Sega versus Nintendo. We're putting this streaming service out. But I mean, they, they already got money. It's CBS. You know, It's not like they're trying to well, yeah. brand themselves as a streaming service yet. They got the stand coming out. I mean, they're it, fine. I'm it, just, it's just the weirdest that that's, that's the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is an interesting first choice. And, uh, and I think it's, it's one, you know, this is, this is a popular subject where there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, movies and TV shows produced about this thing. So they probably think it's going to find a little bit of an audience. It was, it was a pretty, the book did pretty well. And I think the fact that Seth Rogen is, is one of the people behind getting it made helped. Yeah. My um, other part was yeah, it is actually an, about, uh, well, actually, how the book didn't do well. Uh, New York Times, The Daily Telegraph, and The Independent all gave negative reviews, citing that dialogue, as you were talking about, um, as a yeah. fatal flaw because it comes off, like, phony. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, here's a good example of it. One of, one of the people that, that the book talks about a little bit is Howard Phillips. Uh, he, he, was, he was a famous early employee of Nintendo of America, he was known as the Game Master. I am Game Master for Nintendo, and that means I play all the games that we come out with. Um, I help develop all the games and basically make sure that Nintendo makes his, the games as fun as possible. Uh, if you guys ever read, like, early Nintendo Power comics, you may remember, uh, like, Nintendo Power had, had its own mascot named Nestor, and, and the other character in the comics was Howard Phillips, the Game Master. Like, he was just this guy who worked at Nintendo who was basically the first, like, case maker at Nintendo of America, um, where he would play the games and beat them, and then the president of Nintendo of America would be like, oh, like, what did you think about that game? And he would, he would, he would tell him that everything. There's a part in the book, he, he leaves Nintendo in the mid-90s, um, and it talks about like one of the issues was like with his stardom and he felt weird when like people would recognize him and like like young mothers would like flirt with him. It's like, oh, are you any other type of master? I'm like, none of that happened. None of that happened. <laughs> and so, Mr. Simpson, you admit you grabbed her can. What do you have to say in your defense? Mr. Simpson, your silence will only incriminate you further. No, Mr. Simpson, don't take your anger out on me. Get back, get back. Mr. Simpson, no! Dramatization may not have happened. <laughs> I really just feel like none of that happened. Um, and even if it did happen, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> you know, it was definitely it was definitely spiced up for the book. So sometimes you're just reading it and and you're like, nobody talks this way. Um, so it's it, it it can be kind of bizarre. My whole thing with it is kind of really just that CBS All Access. Um, if you're wanting to be the platform we stop at on on the hashtag hype train, I'm not sure that this film is what's going to get me to to uh, do that because I I still don't really want CBS All Access at all. Not interested. So I guess we'll move on to the Boomer Bust, and that's that's my bust right there. Boomer Bust, we're gonna go boom or bust. Boomer Bust. That's oh, it right man, there. That's it. Wait. <laughs> That shit some tracks, down. Matt. Fernandez What's hopefully happening? is the is the editing master. Hopefully he already had that shit recorded and ready to go. Oh, it's on there. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with that. I'm gonna add a little some funk bass. Auto tune and yeah, yeah. some funky bass. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Corey, uh, go ahead and do your do your boomer buzz thing. Boom for me. This is a fun concept, and I think a lot of people are gonna like it. Uh, whether or not it's enough to get CBS a whole bunch more people, unlikely, but. But a uh, boom for me. Uh, it's a boom for me too. Out, outside of the context of you know, of like the the well being of the streaming service, you know, I want to watch this particular thing. I don't think it's going to make me get CBS All Access, but this is a thing that I would like to watch. So I'll boom it. All right. All right. Moving on to the last trailer 
<laughs> let me let me do give a give a good shot at trying to do a good intro for once. Let's do this. I'm gonna stretch out. All right, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Um. All right. The minds behind crafting most of my childhood, in all forms of cartoon and video game voices, are back, and it's an exciting time because they are rebooting a show that I loved and is close to my heart. It's the Animaniacs. Let's check out the sneak peek. How was that? Is that okay? Let this be a lesson to all. Wherever there is stupidity, we'll, we'll be there. there. Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? It's Yakko and Wacko and our sister, Dot. It's time for Animaniacs. All right, there's a lot of pressure on our first lines. Maybe something reminiscent of the first season? But modern to show that we're not your dad's Animaniacs. We're back! We're recording the Animaniacs, which includes and Pinky and the Brain. No. And... Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Hello. We all love this show and these yeah. characters so much, and the scripts so far, they're really, really funny. It's going to be a great new endeavor. Feels good to be back. Uh, Dot, I think we missed our exit. Oopsie. I can't wait to get back to the water tower. I hope my Hootie and the Blowfish album is finally done downloading on Napster. Are you sure this is a good idea? Don't worry, I've done this before. Really? No, wait. I made beef jerky before. What are we going to do tomorrow night, Brian? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> this is an absolute dream come true. We're totally insane Animaniacs, those are the facts. All right. So that was the Animaniacs sneak no. peek. Uh, it's interesting that this, tr this sneak peek... You know, re reboots are are uh, pretty rampant now, um, but this one is is you know I'm having trouble talking, so let's go to Corey. Hey, that that's me. Uh, <laughs> so I have to fight every petty bone in my body to not thrash Fernandez's pick, but I think this is going to be a great time. Uh, everyone loves reboots for the most part nowadays, so taking something as beloved as Animaniacs just seems like a no-brainer. My hope for this personally is that. This is going to lead to a Freakazoid reboot, which I would love to see. <laughs> Super Team Extraordinaire, Freakazoids, Freakazoids, runs around in underwear, Freakazoids, Freakazoids. Because... <laughs> we'll, we'll see I, about that. Yeah, because I love Freakazoid more than I liked Animaniacs. So if this does very well, it could be essentially the DuckTales uh, theory, whereas the new DuckTales is doing so well that they're talking about bringing back Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, uh, Rescue Rangers in that same reboot uh, style. So I'm, I'm all thumbs up for this. They got all the original voice actors back, it looks like. Uh, you know, we just heard the actors say that the scripts have been really funny and really, you know, tried and true to the original format. So it just seems like a win-win. I mean, unless you didn't like Animaniacs when we were younger, in which case, this is just not for you. Sanford? You would like Freakazoid more than Animaniacs. Would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, instant hype for me. I loved Animaniacs so much as a kid. Most re reboots, you know, that don't work, it's because they couldn't capture an element, you know, that made the original great. Uh, they're really trying to show us with this sneak peek trailer esque thing that they're really working at, at doing that, you know, showing us that they have all the voices, you know, that they're trying to do everything. So yeah, not much to say. I mean, the original Animaniacs is great. Um, so hopefully the new one's going to be great. Yes, sir, Ray Baba Rooney. Well, it's not really a cat's phrase, is it? Uh, okay. Well, how about, uh, got any ham? Nah. How about, I feel so free. No. Oh. Don't laugh, it's paid for. Nah. My eyes are burning. Nope. I always wear cowboy boots. I don't think so. Looks like a pump feels like a sneaker. Oh no. Slap my fanny. Well, Steven won't like that one. Don't worry, we faded out by now. Okay, uh, last thing then, just to elaborate, I guess, on this. Um, with the voices, you, we, we, you definitely know that we're getting back Pinky in the Brain, 
Um, obviously, uh, Wacko Yakko and Dot of the Animaniacs themselves, but we don't know because the, the other voices featured um, on the original show because uh, they had little side, uh, side cartoons. Um, we don't know if the Good Feathers are going to make an appearance because I don't think any of the voice actors for that were seen. Too bad we didn't get any medals, but I guess they just don't have any big enough for us Good Feathers. Big? What do you mean by big? Are you trying to say I'm fat? Some kind of roly-poly chicken leg for your matzo ball soup? Um, there's also Slappy the Squirrel. Who is on stage? Yes. Who is? Yes. Oh, so the name of the band is Yes. No, Aunt Slappy, Yes is not even at this concert. Then who is on stage? Yes. Who is? Yes. That's what I just said, Yes is on stage. No, Yes is not here, who is on stage? What are you asking me for? I'm not. <laughs> a funny man come on up here and take a bow um which we probably won't get it should be noted there are other um bits from the anim animaniacs that don't necessarily rely on uh voice actors that we could get um like a uh, good idea bad idea yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah like it's time for another good idea bad idea good idea Drinking fresh milk from the carton. Bad idea. Drinking fresh milk from the cow. Like, or uh, Chicken Boo, because Chicken Boo doesn't talk. Chicken Boo, what's the matter with you? You don't act like the other chickens do. You wear a disguise to look like human guys, but you're not a man, you're a Chicken Boo. There's also, uh, what is it, the yeah. mime? <laughs> it's mime time. Today on Mime Time, trapped in an imaginary box. Well, well hopefully, like, the humor... Um, I mean, bringing back the original voice cast was was the main thing, I think. Bringing back that His humor, His name is just the, the Mime. Oh, okay. <laughs> he is an unnamed mime. Here's a little game we can play. Yeah. Uh, under under a very, very quick <clears throat> thing, because Rob Paulson, who, who voices uh, Yakko, yes, his name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Guys, his name stop it. is Robert Paulson. It's, since he's in literally everything ever made, I wanted to find the least Yakko role that I could find for him that, that is at least recognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found that he voices uh, Cyborg Ninja slash Gray Fox, not in the original Metal Gear Solid, but in the GameCube remake, Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Twin Snake. <laughs> So, wow, and, and that voice—that's the voice used in the Super Smash Brothers games, where he's an assist trophy too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Yakko is Gray Fox. Wow. Okay, uh, let's get this boomer bust up uh, rolling. Matt, what do you, you go first? Oh, boom! You know, I just Animaniacs was my favorite show for a time. So, instant hype. Corey, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Boom for me. Uh, I hope this leads to a freakazoid, hysteria, pinky in the brain, spit like full thing. Uh, but yeah, boom for me. I'm on a boom. And uh, it's like it's my childhood's coming back. In a lot of ways, we did our, our reboot episode and talked about how, you know, everything from our day back then is coming back. And this is just another another one. So they're really, uh, they're really, uh, Hollywood's banking on uh, on our age group to spend a bunch of money nostalgia is huge forever apparently it's gonna it's gonna boom in the sense that a lot of free hulu accounts are gonna start up real quick. <laughs> uh there is plans for a season two next year too so they're gonna have to keep them hulu accounts open i'm saying they're gonna have they're gonna have <laughs> to start a new email and get a different credit card <laughs> All right, everybody. So there's a riot on the platforms. Disney Plus, CBS All Access, and Hulu, they're fighting. They all want the hype train to dock there. We can only dock at one. It's time to determine where are we, where are we parking the hype train and which platform, unfortunately, are we going to have to run over to get there? 
Corey, why don't you start? Uh, what platform do you want us to park at? What platform do you think we need to run over to get there? Uh, so I'm going to say we park at Disney Plus for The Mandalorian Season 2, as well as the future of Marvel television. And uh, I honestly don't want to run over over anybody uh i if we have to bash through somebody i'm gonna say hulu because i'm still holding out that the stand is gonna kick so much ass you'll go blind <laughs> so there you go huh mike well since we're basing it on just this episode and not the other thing but my my vote it's tough because i want to go animaniacs but i want to go mandalorian um, but the reason I'm going to pick Animaniacs is because of Mulan. If we're just going to cite the outside reasons of stuff, Corey. Nah, nah, nah. Um, That's fine. Uh, Mulan and the, all the controversy and Disney Plus charging 30 extra bucks for stuff. Hulu ain't doing that. Hulu's, you know, just offering good stuff. And they have a, an ads version that's cheaper or a non-ads -ad, version. It's got more options. Matt, your turn. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna focus on external things. I'm gonna focus just on these trailers. <laughs> um, and the and the trailer I liked the best was the Mandalorian season two trailer. And I am definitely gonna run over CBS All Access. Yeah. Um, to get damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk hurting Rob Paulson. His his cancer's in remission. I'm not running over Hulu. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, so, so I guess I guess that I guess that's two votes for Disney Plus, one vote for Hulu, and then Fernandez is your vote to run over. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, Disney I was the only one that that busted console wars. I still think like, what do you guys? Th really, that's okay. the thing that's gonna. Well, you had a personal interest. Yeah, so you Matt and Corey, so was, you right. like to think that you don't just choose trailers on a whim, but I know you chose this trailer just because of the ad popped up. You, so, yeah, because I, I told you. I told you that's how I chose. I know, but you're it acting like, like, like this is this is my my stand on on CBS All Access and Console Wars is it? Yeah, and I don't the know. stand, the stand okay. is my stand. On but CBS the stand All isn't Access, in this episode. That's why. That that's why I was like, I well, I'm going to cite outside influences. <laughs> Want to see something strange and mystical? No! Get out of here with that watch! Lay off the poor beavers, will ya? Jeez! You're a creep! Go away! We're having a good time until you show up, jeepers! Uh, go have some coffee with cream or something! Everybody, as you know, um, on the hype train, even if uh, you get run over, even if you get thrown off the train, uh, we still love you anyway. It takes so much hard work uh, to get movies, video games, TV shows off the ground. Even things that seem corporate boardroom driven are huge passion projects for somebody involved. So it's always great um, when something actually gets released. So we like to, we like to celebrate that on, on uh, the hype train. Uh, the two things that I can think of in the past that were released just this past week are the show Utopia. Yeah. Um, Real quick, then, I just uh, I, I like I I, I did start watching that show and it's great. It's crazy. It's out there. It's an interesting watch if you're not sure what to stream and you know this it's friggin' crazy. <laughs> also, um, Mafia remastered, which we uh, really enjoyed in our re 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 our re our re, re re we gave a lot of re 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 respect to in our remaster <laughs> reboot. Whatever, so 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 much reing, um, <laughs> uh, and then also uh, console wars because it took us a few weeks to do another platform wars episode. Uh, console wars, which we talked about in this episode, has been released. So, uh, yeah, we want to we want to congratulate them. <laughs> we uh, want to run it over with a train, and then also real quick, we'll just congratulate you. <laughs> right. That's that's. That's our opinion, not even <laughs> all of our opinion. Not my <laughs> very, opinion. Very true. I know that, <laughs> that was a. Uh, so, but if 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 you're at all interested, uh, go check these things out. All right, uh, Corey, did you want to do a plug thing? I don't have anything prepared, but I didn't know if you wanted to do it this episode. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll kick it off so you guys have a little extra time to think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to plug. Yakuza, the uh, any any piece of the Yakuza series on PlayStation and technically also on the Xbox One a little bit now. Uh, Kiwami One and Two, Zero, uh, 
three through five are in the Yakuza collection, and then six Song of Life. We have uh, Yakuza Like a Boss coming out at the end of the end of uh, at the end of this year. I'm very excited for that. It's just such a fun, intricate, deep series that gets you so involved in these characters' lives, specifically Kazuma Kiryu, that uh, I can't recommend it enough. And I'm playing through Zero right now, and I love every second of it. Sanford. Uh- Follow me on this one, everybody. Imagine I'm staring at you with my, you know, with with an unblinking gaze. I'd like to plug the Pokemon Lickitung. Uh, after, it's a good Pokemon, normal type, <laughs> underrated. Uh, from from Generation 4 and, uh, and uh, on, it evolves into Licky Licky if it levels up knowing the move rollout. Uh, it's a great Pokemon. Everybody, lick a ton. <laughs> Can't beat no it. sign on that. Yeah, Fernandez. Um, okay, so I was trying to think of what I was watching, but I already told everyone Utopia was great. Um, I'm gonna, and since you did something like just a Pokemon, I'm gonna do uh, Sure Microphones. Um, as a musician myself, it is the top brand of microphone. If you're looking to do even podcast stuff, if you watch all the major podcasts out there, they're all using like the Sure. I think it's SM7B or whatever. Um, I'm using a Shure SM57 microphone. It, they're just, they're the top quality in microphone uh, for music, uh, any dialogue discussion stuff, everything. Um, they're the brand. They're the go-to brand. If you ever had a question about that, if you're about microphones ever in your life, just always go with Shure. They're expensive, but they're, there's a reason because they're friggin' quality, man. That's my they're damn fine microphones. Yeah. So <laughs> check out Yaku's microphones was it, Yaku? here in Twin Peaks. <laughs> So Yakuza, the Pokemon lick a tongue and sure microphones, guys. Uh, all three of you were looking for sponsors. So Game Freak, sure. Uh, Yakuza team, feel free to reach out to any one of us here at the Hype Train. Because we'd love your business. Love it. Yeah. Lick a tongue. Come on, come on over to the Hype Train, please. All right. With all of our plugs over with, I think it's time, Corey. Why don't you do your thing? All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this very fun episode of the Hashtag Hype Train. You know, we get a little heated here sometimes. We yell, we scream, we get petty, we get (laughs) hurt feelings. But at the end of the day... Some of us more than others. Me. Uh, Hey, I'm I'm up there too, man. I love these two. (laughs) (laughs) Matt's the the level-headed guy we need. I love these two like brothers. (laughs) (laughs) The hero the city deserves. Uh, I love these two like brothers, and we love you. All of you who watch us. Uh, <laughs> we love you like... And Mike laughing like over it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike laughing over me is very reminiscent of the fact that the three of us are uh, just very good friends. And, uh, and we appreciate all of you who listen. We appreciate everyone who's out there doing things for us uh, that we don't know about. You know, firemen, doctors, policemen. We appreciate all of you. So that being said, for this episode of the Hashtag Hype Train, I'm Corey. I'm Mike. I'm Matt. And we will see you guys on the next ride. Choo-choo!